This criminal story began in the peaceful and serene town of Springview, where life moved with calm and security, as if an invisible barrier protected all its inhabitants. Here, every neighbor knew each other, and any unusual event, something that happened very rarely, immediately became a topic of conversation in the local cafes and at evening gatherings among neighbors. Everyone felt safe and thought that such tragedies happened only in distant places, never in their quiet town. On one of the most picturesque streets, lined with well-kept houses and blooming gardens, was the home of Amelia Vincent, a woman known and loved throughout Springview. Amelia was 45 years old, and to everyone, her life seemed an example of success and harmony. She was someone everyone trusted, her warm smile, gentle voice, and natural kindness made anyone feel comfortable around her. Amelia worked as a social worker at the Community Family Assistance Center, where she had been offering support for over 10 years. During that time, she had helped many families overcome difficulties and start anew. Her colleagues and those she had helped knew she was always willing to give support and dedicate her time to anyone in need. Amelia's home was her pride, and every corner of the house reflected her attention to detail and her love of beauty. The windows were adorned with curtains with delicate floral patterns, and the windowsills were filled with green plants that Amelia carefully tended. In the living room, the walls displayed family photos capturing happy moments of her life with Robert. Her favorite spot was the porch, where she had two comfortable chairs and a small table surrounded by pots of flowers. There, she often sat in the mornings with a cup of tea, observing the neighborhood and getting lost in her thoughts. Her husband, Robert Vincent, was ten years younger than her. They met when he was just starting his career in the financial sector. Tall and slim, with a cold gaze and a confident posture, Robert gave the impression of being distant and reserved. At work, he was known for his professionalism and his skill in analyzing any situation down to the smallest detail, but many of his colleagues noted that he preferred to stay on the sidelines. Robert worked as a financial advisor at a prestigious firm and spent a lot of time away from home, long hours at the office, business trips, and meetings occupied much of his schedule. Unlike the outgoing and friendly Amelia, Robert barely participated in the social life of Springview. He was a reserved man who avoided displays of emotion and rarely interacted with neighbors. While Amelia found pleasure in socializing with her neighbors and participating in local charity events, Robert avoided community events and seemed to prefer solitude or focusing on his work. Some Springview residents noticed a certain tension between him and Amelia, a tension they tried not to display in public. Lily, their 19-year-old daughter, was a mirror image of her mother, a cheerful and lively young woman who loved helping others. Her warmth and kindness made her a favorite both in her family and among her friends. Lily was studying at university, majoring in psychology with the dream of someday working with children and helping them overcome their challenges. She adored her mother and often helped her at the community center, volunteering in various activities. Their relationship was full of mutual trust and support, and Lily saw Amelia as a role model. Unlike her father, Lily was an active part of Springview's life, she had many friends, participated in town events, and enjoyed the love and respect of her neighbors. Despite her academic success and sociable nature, a certain tension was sometimes felt within the family. Lily often noticed her father's tendency to withdraw, and occasionally, subtle frictions arose between him and her mother, although they were barely noticeable. Amelia sincerely hoped that the family vacation in San Diego, which she was planning, would be an opportunity to bring them closer together. She envisioned long walks on the beach, enjoying the ocean air, breaking away from the daily routine, and spending quality time together. She felt her family needed these moments to regain their lost unity. However, instead of the anticipated trip, what awaited them was a tragedy that would shatter their world and shock the entire town. Shortly after the vacation plans were announced, the Vincent family's life took an unexpected turn, and an incident occurred in their home that would leave an indelible mark on Springview. Thus began this story that the residents of this small town would never forget. Amelia's Family Life Life in the Vincent family seemed ideal, at least at first glance. 
Amelia continued working at the Family Assistance Center as always, dedicating herself to her profession with full commitment. She firmly believed she could change people's lives for the better, and each day brought new challenges and joys. Her clients knew she was not only a professional but also a true friend, always willing to listen and support. In her work, she found the purpose that helped her face personal difficulties. Although Robert worked a lot, he tried to balance his career with family life. He spent long hours at the office, traveling for business, and attending meetings, leaving him little time for home. Although he was a loving man, his coldness and sometimes distant behavior created tension in his relationship with Amelia. Though he loved her, his communication style often became problematic. Amelia tried to engage in conversations, but Robert wasn't always willing to open up. They argued occasionally but always made up, and she hoped their relationship would improve with the time they'd spend together on their vacation. Lillian, their 19-year-old daughter, was the glue that held the family together. She was a caring and attentive young woman who tried her best to ease the tension between her parents. She often organized game nights or cooking experiments to lift the mood and create a cozy atmosphere. She loved spending time with her mother, cooking dinners and sharing secrets with each other. Every night, when they sat down for dinner, Amelia made an effort to create a warm and trusting environment. In those moments, she felt the family coming together again. She prepared everyone's favorite dishes and genuinely took an interest in how Robert and Lillian's days had gone. During those times, she felt that everything could change for the better, that their connection was strengthening. However, a storm was brewing on the horizon. Robert began spending more and more time at the office, and Amelia noticed his growing restlessness. She couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Sometimes he would come home with a tired and distant look, which worried her. She tried to talk to him, but he assured her everything was fine and that he was just busy with work. One evening, when Amelia came home from work, she noticed that Robert was on the phone in their bedroom. His voice sounded tense and low, and his expression was guarded. When he saw her, he quickly ended the conversation and tried to appear unbothered. This unsettled Amelia. She couldn't understand why he was being so secretive. That night, when they discussed the upcoming vacation, Robert showed no interest and merely nodded indifferently to Amelia's ideas. His silence and lack of enthusiasm frightened her. She felt that her family needed this time together more than ever, but the disconnect was becoming increasingly obvious. Sensing the tension in the air, Lillian decided it was time to step in. She organized a movie night with popcorn and some old films, hoping to bring back a sense of joy and closeness. During the movie, she tried to lighten the atmosphere by asking questions and sharing her thoughts. This helped bring her parents a bit closer, but the tension lingered. Lillian watched as they exchanged cold glances and understood that her family needed help. Despite all her efforts, Amelia couldn't shake her unease. She often thought about how their relationship was on the brink of collapse. Fleeting moments of joy and warmth would envelop her, only to be quickly replaced by heavy thoughts about what was going on with Robert. At that moment, she couldn't imagine that her life was about to change drastically and that a tragic event in their cozy home would impact them forever. Discovery of the Body April 17, 2019, began like an ordinary spring day in Twilight Park. Sunlight gently filtered through the windows, and birdsong filled the air. Amelia was preparing to go to work at the assistance center, unaware that this day would change her life forever. When Lillian left for her classes, Amelia decided to make breakfast for Robert, who planned to spend the entire day at the office. She knew he often skipped meals due to his tight schedule. At that moment, there was a cozy and peaceful atmosphere in the house. Amelia put on her favorite music and began preparing scrambled eggs with vegetables, Robert's favorite dish. When breakfast was ready, Amelia headed to the bedroom to wake Robert. She carefully opened the door, and upon entering, she noticed that his bed was empty. At first, she thought he might be in the bathroom, but upon checking, there was no one there. Surprised, she decided to search the other rooms. 
In a panic, Amelia called Lillian to ask if she had seen her father. But in response, she heard that Lillian was in class and couldn't talk. Amelia began pacing anxiously around the house, her thoughts tangled, and her heart racing with anxiety. Finally, in a burst of desperation, she decided to return to the office to look for him there. When she entered the office, her heart stopped. Robert was lying on the floor, unconscious. His face was pale, and his breathing was shallow. Amelia ran to him, her hands trembling as she tried to wake him. He was unresponsive. In a panic, she grabbed the phone and called an ambulance. Please, come quickly. My husband isn't breathing, she cried into the phone, feeling the fear engulf her. The paramedics promised they would arrive as soon as possible, but every second felt like an eternity. Amelia tried again to wake Robert, shaking him and calling his name, but he remained silent. Soon, the sound of sirens echoed through the house, and Amelia felt hope flooding back. The ambulance arrived, and the medics quickly got to work, trying to bring Robert back to life. They performed the necessary procedures, but Amelia's heart sank with fear. To her horror, one of the medics came out to her and said words she could never have imagined. We're very sorry, but unfortunately, we couldn't save him. He has passed away. Those words struck Amelia like thunder in a clear sky. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. Her world, which just moments before had seemed normal, turned fractured and chaotic. She collapsed onto the floor, feeling tears streaming down her cheeks, unable to hold back her sobs. No, she whispered, overwhelmed by indescribable pain. This is impossible. But dark thoughts began to creep into her mind. Robert had looked too pale, and there was a strange smell. She remembered how the night before he had complained of a headache and seemed tired, but nothing had hinted at disaster. The questions started multiplying, how had he come to this state? Why hadn't he responded to her call? The neighbors and paramedics who arrived to help witnessed her grief, but no one knew what to say. In that moment, as she sat on the floor, lost in her thoughts, Amelia remembered that someone had knocked on her door the previous night. She hadn't had time to look through the peephole, it had been a figure that quickly disappeared. Could it have been related to what had happened? A medic approached her, and Amelia felt her heart stop with fear. He explained that Robert had been found in a coma and that they needed to conduct further tests to determine the cause. But a sense of unease had already taken root in her heart, could it have been an accident? Or was there something more sinister behind what had happened in her home? We did everything we could, said the medic, his voice tinged with regret. But we'll need to investigate to understand what really happened. The medic's words filled Amelia with ominous foreboding. She began to realize that her life, which had only just seemed ordinary, had turned broken and chaotic, and deep down, she understood, this couldn't have been just an accident. Thus began a new chapter in Amelia's life, full of fear, loss, and uncertainty, as she couldn't imagine that her world would never be the same. The Start of the Investigation When the news of the tragedy quickly spread around the area, Amelia's house became the center of attention. The neighbors murmured about what had happened, and some came to express their condolences, but Amelia was too stunned to speak. She felt her world crumbling, barely comprehending that her life would never be the same. The day after Robert's death, Detective Laura Rubens arrived at her home. An experienced investigator with over ten years on the force, Laura was known for her determination and firmness, yet she had the empathy needed to understand people in their grief. Amelia, I am very sorry for what happened, Laura said as she entered the house. Her voice was gentle but resolute. I'm here to ask you some questions and find out what occurred. Amelia, still in shock from the loss, nodded and led Laura to the office where Robert had been found. The windows were slightly open, letting fresh air into the room, but the atmosphere remained overwhelming. The furniture was in place, as though Robert's life had been interrupted in an instant. At the time of the tragedy, her 19-year-old daughter, Lena, had been studying at university and came home upon hearing of her father's death. 
Lena had always been very close to her father and considered him her best friend. Now she couldn't grasp the situation. Her cries and tears filled the house when she learned of his passing. How could this happen, she exclaimed, barely holding back tears. He was healthy, he always took care of himself. Laura, observing the daughter's reaction, understood that Lena's grief would be part of the investigation. She decided to speak with her later, once emotions had calmed a bit. I know it's hard, but we need to clarify the circumstances, Laura continued, carefully examining the room. Can you tell me what happened just before you found him? Amelia placed her hand on the table, trying to gather her thoughts, and began recounting her day, explaining how she had been preparing breakfast and looking for Robert. She mentioned hearing strange noises but hadn't paid them much attention, and that someone had knocked on the door the night before. Strange noises? A little before you found him? Laura clarified, raising an eyebrow. Can you describe what you heard exactly? Amelia reflected. Everything was muddled in her mind, but she tried to remember. It was like a creak, something falling, I think, she said, feeling a growing sense of unease. But I thought it could have been anything. The detective, taking notes, nodded, considering every word. She began to ask more questions about Robert, his habits, and who he had recently been in contact with. Laura's questions unearthed not only details of his life but also mysterious aspects Amelia had never considered. Did Robert have any enemies? Or anyone he didn't get along with, the detective asked, watching Amelia closely. Amelia shook her head, though she remembered disagreements Robert had with some colleagues. They both worked at the same technology company, and sometimes conflicts arose from misunderstandings. But she doubted that could have been the cause of his death. I don't think he had any enemies, she said, trying to sound certain. He was always friendly and sociable. Laura took note of this, though her experience told her that every conflict could hide deeper issues. She continued with her questions, and soon the conversation turned to Robert's health. Was he taking any medication, the detective asked, noticing Amelia's hesitation. Yes, he mentioned having trouble sleeping and sometimes took pills to calm down, Amelia replied, lost in her memories. But he never said he had any serious health issues. Laura nodded, jotting down notes. She felt that something wasn't right. After several hours of conversation, the detective asked Amelia to prepare a list of people Robert had communicated with to get a fuller picture of his life. The next morning, Laura returned to the station, where the toxicology report results awaited her. When she glanced at the data, her heart skipped a beat, a high concentration of sedatives had been found in Robert's blood, which had led to cardiac arrest. Laura felt a growing sense of unease. She knew this could mean something more than just an accident. This looks like an overdose, she murmured to herself, looking at the results. It's possible this was a murder. The detective decided to inform Amelia immediately. That evening, she returned to her house. Amelia, I need to talk to you about the results, Laura said when Amelia opened the door, her voice serious. They sat down at the table, and Laura explained. In Robert's blood, a high concentration of sedatives was found. This is no coincidence. I suspect his death may have been intentional. Amelia felt a chill run down her spine. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. Murder? But who could have done such a thing? Her voice trembled with anguish. Hearing the conversation, Lena stepped out of her room and paused in the doorway, her eyes filled with tears. Mom, what's going on? she asked, her voice quivering with fear. Why are you talking about Dad's murder? Amelia turned to her daughter, her heart aching. She understood that Lena, too, needed to know the truth, no matter how difficult it was. Lena, I just found out that your father had medications in his blood that may have caused his death. The detective believes it could be murder, she said, a bitter expression crossing her face. Lena paled, her hands began to shake. She collapsed into a chair, unable to believe what she was hearing. It can't be. She whispered, 
breaking down in tears. Who could do something like this to dad? Laura looked at both of them with compassion. She knew this family had a tough road ahead, and all she could do was uncover the truth so they could have answers. I don't know yet, but we're going to investigate this case. We need to find out who else had access to his medications and who might have wanted to harm him, Laura responded, her expression determined. With each passing day, the investigation deepened, and Amelia and Lena were left with more questions. They realized that their lives, once filled with hope and love, had become a complex puzzle, and they were determined to uncover the truth. Thus began a new and troubling chapter in Amelia and Lena's lives, filled with anxiety and uncertainty, but they were ready to fight for the truth in Robert's memory. A twist in the investigation. The following days became a true test for Amelia and Lena. They lived each minute hoping to find justice and answers to their agonizing questions. As the detectives continued gathering evidence, life in their home moved slowly, as if time itself had slowed. Every time Amelia passed the office, she felt Robert's presence. It filled her with sadness, and she tried to distract herself with worries about her daughter and household tasks. Detective Laura Rubens continued her work, and her team reviewed the security footage from cameras in the area. As she reviewed the recordings, one image caught her attention, a hooded man approaching Robert's house, glancing around. He lingered for a few minutes at the front door before disappearing from view. Laura immediately called the station to request information on this person. They began comparing information about the suspect with records of prior crimes in the area. This could be the key to the case, Laura thought, noting every detail. If they could identify him, perhaps they could bring the killer to justice. When investigators finally established the suspect's identity, it was a shock. The man approaching the house turned out to be an acquaintance of Roberts, his former colleague, Daniel Sanders. He had had disagreements with Roberts several years ago. Amelia mentioned him during the detective's recent questioning as they reviewed all possible connections. I didn't think he could do something like this, she said with sadness. They didn't get along well, but I thought those were just disagreements that had been resolved. Laura realized this could be a starting point to pursue the investigation. The detective team immediately began tracking Daniel. They examined his financial records and noted frequent visits to restaurants near Robert's family home. He was clearly trying to reconnect with people in the area. Meanwhile, Amelia and Lena, despite the difficult situation, tried to support each other. Lena returned to school, and Amelia found comfort in working on new projects, taking time to rebuild her life. However, thoughts of Robert's murder always lingered in their minds. One day, while Amelia was looking through old photo albums, she noticed something strange, in one of the pictures, taken on their anniversary, Daniel appeared in the background, and his face seemed very familiar. Amelia's heart began to race. Lena, look, she exclaimed, showing the photo to her daughter. It's him. Lena leaned in, studying the image. Suddenly, they both understood, perhaps Daniel had motives they hadn't considered. Did Robert have secrets no one knew about? Once Laura heard about this, she decided to question Daniel again. She expected him to be nervous, but his reaction was even more unsettling. During the interrogation, he showed signs of insecurity and tried to deflect attention, but Laura was ready for anything. Why were you near Robert's house on the night of his death? She asked, looking him straight in the eyes. Daniel hesitated for a moment, then began stammering a flimsy excuse. I was just passing by, it was nothing special. But Laura noticed his nervousness. She could feel he was hiding something important. After a tense interrogation, she decided to keep surveillance on him. Several days later, thanks to the surveillance, they caught him at the scene of the crime. They found evidence left behind, tools and clothing that matched the descriptions seen in the recordings. He had been trying to destroy evidence but was caught in the act. This confirmed that his actions were deliberate. The evidence collection led the detectives to request an arrest warrant from the court. When he was arrested, Laura felt that justice would finally be served. 
We've caught him, she told Amelia and Lena when they arrived at the station. He'll have to answer for what he did. Amelia and Lena were shocked, but it was important to them to be one step closer to justice. After the arrest, the trial began, where both women hoped to get all the answers. The trial soon attracted media attention. Everyone was concerned about the family who had suffered such a horrific experience. Amelia and Lena felt that despite all the difficulties, they could get through it together. They knew they could move forward if they kept Robert's memory alive and fought for justice. In the final session of the trial, when Daniel faced the court, Amelia gave a powerful speech, filled with emotion, talking about Robert, what he was like as a person, and his love and care for his family. Her words touched everyone present deeply. When the judge delivered the verdict, the family felt a part of the pain lift. Though Robert was no longer with them, they had managed to honor his memory, moving forward with hope for a brighter future. Thus ended one chapter of their lives and began another, filled with new opportunities and memories of what truly mattered.